Hi everyone, George is here. Today we're going to talk about inline code in Power Automate. Is that a thing you might ask? Well, not yet, but today we're going to walk you through how to enable JavaScript code inside Power Automate flows. Why is it important? Well, because ability to write code directly inside flows um, enables you to execute some complex expressions without uh, the need to create extra functions without taking execution outside the flow it enables some complex scenarios like uh, regular expression parsing um, complex arithmetics complex logics anything you can do in javascript you can do in line code and guess what logic apps already have it but ultimately we want it because code on the left hand side is easier to write and understand even for citizen developers than power apps expressions on the right so let's get started let's start with a simple flow that parses the subject of the inbound emails and extracts any invoice numbers that are mentioned in that subject line so uh, we're not going to process email we just add the input parameter to um, to the flow and uh, simulate subject by entering it by hand so uh, the advantage of this approach is that uh, uh, we'll be able to use this once it's tested uh, in any flow and just call it as a child flow so then we'll be able to hook the inbound invoice uh, inbound uh, emails and process the real subject lines and so on so first of all we declare an array to hold the uh, out output um, of this flow so um, which could be uh, any number of invoices mentioned uh, then what we would like to do is to actually split the subject line into words so we just take the um, subject line and use a built-in split function um, to split into words and each one of those words the kind of noise words word as far as we're concerned or its potential in invoice number and let's say invoice numbers um, begin with the prefix inv followed by the dash followed by any number of digits which is the actual invoice number so what we do after splitting the subject line we can um, use apply to each loop and each item within this loop is going to be the word um, we just grab this word the current item and let's check if it starts with the word inv dash if it does then what we do um, we would like to take the substring from that value and add it to array as an integer number so let's see how we build this expression so we convert to integer substring and then from the current item just skip four characters and the rest of the word we assume it's a number and we convert it to the number at the array and we're kind of done right so we we can go ahead and test it by adding a compose step just to see what the output is and we just use invoices array as an output so let's go ahead and test it now so um, just put some subject in let's say uh, we attach the invoices and they are invoice one two three and another invoice uh, and case doesn't matter it could be uppercase eight nine seven on nine eight seven then we run it and we get the output and here we are so we we have the output of two invoices one two three and nine eight seven and it's all good until we realize that well what if email can test the subject where invoices are separated by comma it's not going to work because the separator here is comma and not a space so we would like to add comma to the list of separators so to speak there's no easy way to do it so what we're 
going to do fix this flow by um, converting all the commas to spaces and then we can apply the same transformation that we used before that is split that string into the list of words using space as a separator set so that that gives us ability to use either comma or a space as a separator as you can see we tested and the outcome yes it's what we expect and now we can use either either one as a separator so let's just pause for a second and see what we achieved so we spent about four and a half minutes uh, give or take and we created the flow and uh, it's a little bit fragile and we can't shake the feeling that there must be a better way and there is so let's get to it so first of all we are going to head and create an azure function we need a container where we run our code so uh, we have already a resource group pre-created so we're just uh, going ahead and create a function app give it a bit of a name and we're going to use node as our runtime stack why node because uh, all the input and output in flow in power automate is json so it's kind of natural that we would like to use uh, scripting javascript as, as our language then we fill in we accept the default for the rest uh, um, just going ahead and create the function uh, wait just a little bit it uh, usually takes uh, a couple minutes um, so what you see in this kind of sped up process uh, and once deployment is complete we just go ahead and jump to the resource uh, function app and just start by creating a new function and we use HTTP trigger so we can call our function just by get a pass to the endpoint and it creates us a skeleton and we choose to um, to use just the inline code we could have used like Visual Studio code to enter in our code but here we just use uh, um, the environment the functional environment the online environment why because our entire function is actually one line of code so we're creating uh, a new function which contains request body as the functional body so it's kind of a fancy way to do evaluation and then we call that function and return the outcome and that's about it believe it or not that's all that is needed so we just save this function and now we can call it so let's uh, can we go ahead switch back um, and start creating a new flow and we start the timer as before same story as before we create a manual trigger and uh, uh, to process invoices or rather subject lines and once we test it then we'll be able to call it from elsewhere so we add the input to that uh, flow um, called subject and then the next step is going to be the call to that function that we just created so we just go ahead and uh, uh, use HTTP connector and create that function using post method because we would like to pass the information in the body uh, we get the function URL from the function it will contain the key that kind of creates uh, an authentication for our function so we don't want anyone calling it from elsewhere and then what we'll do we just create a javascript just like that so what we create a regular expression that extracts those invoice numbers and we return straight forward array by processing matching all the results uh, and parsing it and converting to a number um, and pass the subject in and let's test it please find the touch invoices uh, input the invoice numbers comma separated uh, and let's have some fun let's uh, use another separator like ampersand sign as a separator and run it ready to go run and it should take about uh, couple seconds to run it and the outcome of that call is an array of invoice numbers so that's it so we just executed a JavaScript code arbitrary code in this instance it was a 
regular expression, parsing the subject line, uh, and we return the results of that execution to the Power Automate. And we spent like four times less time, um, just one step. There is no need to kind of uh, do anything else. It's just one step, input and output. The whole process and this is a small piece of JavaScript code. Um, and we're done. Why is it uh, kind of handy, important? You can say, hey, look, uh, you need to know JavaScript code. Well, because with that, you can do some fancy processing and you're no longer limited by the functions that are included in Power Automate. So let's see what else we can do kind of in, uh, uh, in the next minute or so. So let's have some fun and uh, let's create uh, something that will be virtually impossible to create in Power Automate uh, without jumping through the large, large hoops. Let's calculate a Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence at uh, um, sequence of numbers where uh, each number is the sum of two previous numbers, except the first two numbers, which is zero and one. So let's just go ahead and uh, call our HTTP um, function. And uh, I'm just going to ahead and uh, paste the code and you can go ahead and find this code online. This is calculation of Fibonacci sequence. And we're saying we generate a number uh, the Fibonacci numbers up to the number that provided as an input. So let's go ahead and save it and test it. And I would like to calculate, let's say, uh, 25 Fibonacci numbers. And we're done. It takes a little bit of time because there is a recursion going on. So there's some challenge there. So five seconds. But within five seconds, we get the full sequence of Fibonacci numbers. Here you have it. So I challenge you to try and create a Power Automate flow that would replicate that result. So here you have it. That's how easy it is to add inline code to your Power Automate flows. Of course, there is more to it. We can add a connector, we can add external libraries, we can add error handling and more. And we talk about all these in my free inline code in Power Automate course. So go ahead, follow the link and register and start learning. Of course, we've got more than that. And uh, we do have some extensive courses, both free and paid. And don't forget to use 365 George code to receive 30% off of any paid course. Until next time, keep enabling.